or any of those types of things. Because they're all in the state regulations. I'm talking about from a from a zoning perspective that would say, for example, to have 10 residents, you need lot area of X hundred square feet per resident. But those, Just like we have with our multifamily housing in town where there are certain ratios or densities, you can't exceed 25 residents per acre, whatever it is. You haven't proposed that type of standard. No, I haven't because they, they are all covered in the state regulations. And that's one of the reasons I gave you the state regulation so you can see. I understand that, but again, from a zoning and planning perspective, you're not seeking to impose any type of thresholds that say a certain type of property only could support over a certain amount of residents, for example. You're leaving it open from a zoning perspective completely subject only to the special permit process. Yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure I wasn't miss, missing something. George, I didn't analyze the uh, state regulations you presented to us as a support document uh, thoroughly, but I saw enough in there that kind of bothered me. Uh, could the mis Ken, let me ask a question. You don't have answer it or don't answer it, like you did my colleague. Uh, would the Masonic home meet all of those state regulations? It seems to be a lot of them, or would you be coming in for a lot of variances? And I doubt the state would allow variances to their regulations. I doubt it's that this- It kind of got me confused. So I doubt that that's this- That's why I'm asking it. I doubt the state would allow I variances doubt. also. So any site that we came in for special use approval, would we wouldn't do that unless the site met the state requirements. Right, I mean, I saw some stuff off site or on site that had to be done that so much minimum for a person that kind of difficult on the Masonic side, maybe most of them in all ways. So why is this village zone chosen to put this kind of use? It seems like given the, the, the goals of this zone, this would be an interesting addition to that zone and it would allow the residents of, of, the, of the residential care home to live in an interesting place where they, I know one of the goals for this zone is that it be pedestrian friendly. Um, there's a contemplation that the majority of these people would be pedestrians as a matter of fact and could make use of living in that zone. And also because we believe there are sites in this zone that would be appropriate for this use. So it's more than just the Masonic location that you're doing this for. We only expect to come forward with one application for one site, but there may be a number of sites for and which that's it would the be site appropriate. You expect to come forward with. Most you probably. Don't want to say? Why is the builder that's interested or has an interest here tonight? Just well, she to answered the question. Oh, okay. Stop. I'll stop. Thank you. Dan, I'd like to get into a little more detail about your ideas of how this type of use is consistent both with the um, plan of conservation development as well as the old Wethersfield master plan which was done approximately 2007 or 2008. I'm having a hard time reconciling quite frankly uh, the use um, with both both plans and I'd like to hear from you Councilor how you feel this fits in is consistent uh, with what is in those two documents. Well to, to kind of combine the two um, my understanding is that um, the things that those documents um, are proposing are um, a, a vibrant, for this zone, a vibrant mix of uses, a pedestrian friendly zone, um, the, either the rehabilitation or the conservation of your buildings in that zone that, that are historic buildings, um, and um, some way to address the, the housing needs of an aging population. That's where I have some difficulty reconciling the, the housing, the multiple housing that you're talking about with reference to these plans, uh, the diversity of housing, for example. I don't see where the master plan counts, uh, looks forward to a diversity of housing within what well, I call the jewel of our town, uh, Old Wethersfield. Uh, that's what makes us stand out as a community. And so we're very careful 
and I really would like to have a better explanation of where you're coming from with this and how it fits in with what we're trying to portray and put forward in Wethersfield. Well, the uses that are allowed in that zone are residential and business. This is simply a form of residential that would preserve the, the, out, the outside appearance of a historic home and very likely um, most of the buildings in that, in that zone are, would qualify as historic. So this is a use that would preserve the, the appearance of the historic um, buildings but allow um, a more flexible residential alternative for people who might like to live there. My anticipation is that the majority of residents who would, who would take advantage of this will be people in Wethersfield who would like to stay here but need um, a more affordable, less stressful living situation. And this is a zone that would be very attractive to that population. Because how does that fit in with what we're looking for as far as the retail aspect, the tourist aspect, and, and the other parts, which is such an important part of what the town of Wethersfield is attempting to develop? Well, since residential is one of the uses that you allow there, I would think when an applicant comes forward with um, a, a request for a special use for a building, probably one of the things that you would consider is whether that building could in fact be used for retail or a, another business use. If the answer is no, but it's a building that could be used as a residential care home and could be maintained as a historic structure, then perhaps that's the best use for that structure. So I'm looking at the village as a whole, not the particular Masonic temple, but the village as a whole, right. and how this type of use fits in to the expansion and development in the tourist area, uh, the tourist uh, traffic that we're attempting to uh, advance in, in, in the town, which is such an important part of our economy. Well, you allow residential uses there, so how does a residential use fit into the tourist um, well, goals? What I don't see is where diversity of housing is for the diversity of housing is comes in under our master plan for this whole for the village. I think that for, for diversity of housing in general for the town of Wethersfield, but I don't when I read the plan of development, I don't see that for the village. And please correct me if I'm wrong where where it is. I I, I, I don't see any reason it couldn't be. <laughs> to take the opposite side of your argument. Dan, if I might just add to what you asked, you're overlooking the fact that in our village business regulations, single family residential is allowed or multifamily only in the event that in the very same building as the residential, there's retail, restaurant, or some other type of business use. It prohibits completely standalone multifamily. So I'm also having a hard time reconciling because what you're proposing is akin to straight multifamily with no business or retail element. It seems very inconsistent. We made a choice when we prepared these zoning regulations very consciously not to have multifamily or um, congregate housing or these types of housing types in the village business district at the time. So I think you're butting up against the, the way the regulations are currently in terms of not allowing the multifamily use. That, that's true, we're, we're asking for a change. And as I, as I suggested, if in fact we come up forward with an application for a piece of property where you, you believe the property could, could better be used in the more con for the more conventional uses in this zone, then you might, not, you might not grant that special use. But if in fact there's a piece of property that does not seem particularly well suited for a retail or a single family or the combination as you suggest, then this would give you a nice alternative. Preserving a, a, a historic building and allowing it to be used um, for a use that for which there is a need. Do you have any data, you know, on the 
on the need in Weathersfield specifically in this area for this type of use? You know, I, I, I haven't looked up the census data um, um, for this town. I have for a number of other towns, and, and it seems to be um, pretty general throughout certainly the greater Hartford area that there is an aging population um, for which housing becomes a problem. And you, would you agree as a general matter that there's no you know, there's, there's no reason why someone couldn't attempt this type of use in any other of, you know, half a dozen different zones in Weathersfield. You haven't proposed it for those, but certainly uh, there'd be no reason why you couldn't. Would you agree? It, it, it may be possible in other zones. To be honest, the vibrancy of this, of this zone um, Seem, would seem very attractive to the population we're looking to serve. Okay. Anybody else? I want to follow up on some of other Joe's other questions concerning the applicant's submission. Peter, after your memo, there was a page that is stamped May seventh of two thousand eighteen. Do I have it in the right order? So the document um, stamped May, uh, I can't remember if that's 7 or 17th, but um, it's, I'm, I'm assuming it's the same document. Uh, that is the uh, applicant's uh, attachment uh, in terms of the specific regulations they are proposing in, reference, in the amendment. References parking for motor vehicles, passive recreation improvements, criteria. But, but it specifically focuses on uh, residential care homes allowed in the VP. Uh, this is added to sections 5.2 for the permitted uses and it's quite limited when it says add to section 6.2 C subsection A for residential care homes on one space of parking every three residents per plus one space for one employee for every 12. Um, it's very focused on that and what Joe I thought was going to continue was things like green space a certain ratio of of, uh, of open area, uh, parking area, sideline requirements, any of those type things. Uh, those are all in the state regulations. And the parking that we have here, in fact, is the state required parking. So that, that was extracted from the other state regulations? Yes. Okay. Did you have anything else? No. That's okay. okay. Anybody over there? Um, if you don't have anything else at this point, I would uh, open it up to the public. Uh, is there anybody who wishes to speak, uh, Mrs. Keene? And when you come up, please give us your name and address for the record yep. so that we can keep track of things. My name is Judy Keene. I live at 126 Broad Street on the Weathersfield Green in the beautiful um, jewel of Weathersfield, old Weathersfield. Um, just before I go into my comments, I would like to say that I did read the state regulations very carefully. I'm a nurse and um, I've dealt with regulations for many years So um, in nursing. So um, I am going to allude to some of the questions that you had. Um, First of all, I have to say I don't understand why the Glastonbury developers, Joan ha Jones Hollows, um, bypassed the Historic District Commission. The rest of us, when we need to have a zoning change, go to Historic District <coughs> first, and which they did, and it was denied without prejudice. They could have gone back and reapplied to HDC. So that's um, just a question that I have about the process here. Um, I would like to read something from the Old Weathersfield Master Plan, which was a $50,000 grant from Preserve America. Um, and I believe it, it was already dated about five or six years ago that um, it was put into place. And it culminated with focus groups from um, all over the district, um, questionnaires. Um, it was a very, very thorough process. Um, in determining what Old Weathersfield should look like. And some of the things have already been implemented. Town and stakeholders, I'm quoting, town and stakeholders in Weathersfield in general are to seek opportunities that increase the usage and vitality of historic resources. 
while simultaneously improving the business atmosphere. It is critical to identify uses that will increase the activity and attractiveness <coughs> of Old Wethersfield as a destination, while also providing practical economic ben benefit to the property owners. This point is a crucial one because in many ways it separates the approach of this study from many other planning or development studies. A municipal municipality or government entity taking the lead on a planning study is more able to develop blue sky approaches, and this is the most important part, without being overly concerned about the shorter term financial interests and realities of individual property owners. End quotes. The proposed zoning, zoning change would alter the ambience of Old Wethersfield at a time when tourism momentum is beginning to make a difference. We have not had as many new and successful businesses since before the recession. I am sure that this success is what attracted the developers to Wethersfield, but they are not really interested in community success, but in the shorter term financial interest described in the study. And I question their business sense. When nursing homes and assisted li living facilities are closing or desperately seeking residents, why do they, they think that Wethersfield's elders would choose to leave their home to live in a 350 square room bedroom, share a bathroom with a stranger, and share all of their free time with 11 other elders that they do not know? We are told that this will cost as much as assisted living where they would have an entire apartment. The rate that we have been told would be $150 a day or a minimum of $4,500 a month plus extras. And Avery Heights is approximately $4,000 a month for an apartment. In addition, the state regulations that the applicant submitted also require that the building have outside space of 100 square feet per resident. This answers your question. Not to include driveway and sidewalks. Although I have not measured it out with all of the additions that they have planned for the building, including a garage and under the um, zoning, they would be allowed to have other outbuildings. Um, I do not think that there would be adequate space. If it is at 1,200 square feet, it is just barely. And that is not the intent of the state regulation. Their wish is to have outdoor space that residents can enjoy. The parking requirement by state code is one space of every three residents, as we've already heard, and caregivers. This is many more spaces needed than the developers originally have stated. Their feeling is that these would be healthy residents who do not require nursing care, who do not have any dementia, that they are just lonely, but would not want to maintain their own car. And that's basically what we were told at the in, in initial meeting. In my 50 years of experience as a nurse and as a caregiver for elderly parents and for others, I have found that the need to drive is the last thing to go. If their business plan is not a success, we would have a congregate living building or worse, a district of congregate living where boarding houses are the norm and buildings may become halfway houses or rehab centers, all needed but not appropriate in the historic district, in the business district. I have lived in Wethersfield all of my life and moved to the historic district in 1978. My home and many others like it in the early to mid 1900s was made into a two family home. Once we remodeled it and significantly invested in it to make it again a single family dwelling, my understanding is that to, prefer, to preserve the village atmosphere, it would never ever be zoned other than as a single family home. Now I am to believe that a change in zoning would allow for congregate living or boarding houses in the district. While Wethersfield is being lauded by um, Yankee Magazine in 21 must visit New England towns and villages and by the Boston Globe as a tank of gas away describing a leafy step back in time and the largest historic district in the state, filled with 18th and 19th century homes. Main Street is a beauty, they call it, lined with stately 100-year-old trees, small museums, and lovely pocket gardens ending at the shores of the pretty Wethersfield Cove. 
Another Yankee Magazine article, Lauds Our Antiquity in a Story, Old Weathersfield, Connecticut, Could You Live Here? The Nutmeg State's largest historic district may be the most perfect walking village in all of New England. Written in 2017, it describes the eateries, the museums and the shops, our heritage seeds, the quiet social life, and the affordability of homes. The New England Today travel section in February of 1918 describes exploring Old Weathersfield, Connecticut, the oldest and, the oldest and largest historic district in Connecticut, where more than 150 homes predate the Civil War and many the Revolutionary War. This gem of a community should not go backwards to Depression-era boarding houses, but forward to charm, prosperity, great atmosphere, and awesome neighbors. I just have one more thing to add, and that is that there was an article in the paper today that Newington is going to be building 122 assisted living apartments and 89 independent living apartments. Why would anybody want to live in a 350 square foot bedroom when this is available right down the street? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak? Um, yes, Ben, right behind. Judy, you're a hard act to follow. <laughs> uh, I'm Martha Smart. I live at 62 Church Street, which is right down the corner from the corner there. I've lived there since 1970. We raised our children there. They went to local schools. Uh, we kind of chose that area because I don't drive. And the bus was down to the corner. You could go to the Hartford. There was a grocery store. There was a drug store. There was a library up the street. There was even a uh, Cine Web around the corner on the side of the It was perfect. There was a bakery there, too. Uh, Abe's Bakery. Uh, other businesses have moved in and out of there. Uh, sweet gatherings. Uh, some retail stores. It's been a vibrant mix. Now, I spend a good deal of my time at the Weathersfield Historical Society. I volunteer there as a librarian. I worked for 14 years at the Connecticut Historical Society as a research and reference librarian. I, ask, I answer a lot of queries. I've gotten queries from Australia. I've gotten people in from Sweden, as well as Great Britain. And I always say, don't miss seeing the cove down at the end of the street here. I always give directions to the green and great places to eat here in town. Don't miss the Wedding Stevens. And if you want to see a purported 17th century house, around the corner at Butt Up Williams. Part of my job is really selling old Weathersfield. And I'm proud to do that because I'm a proud of what we've got here. And I really don't think. In the first place, I'm a little bit fuzzy about what a residential care facility really means. I've heard that, well, it's old people. Well, it could be young people. Well, perhaps it could be drug rehabilitation. Is that a possibility? I don't know. This seems rather nebulous. But I do know that I don't think it would be the, to the benefit of old Weathersfield to have such a facility or possibly more than one, if we pass this thing, uh, in our business residential district. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Gentleman in the back. Good night to everyone. And I must say thanks to, the, to my uh, neighbors that are here uh, tonight. My name is Paul Brady. I reside at 16 Church Street in Old Weathersville. I am 
most of the time I'm walking. I'm probably one of the youngest, you know, out there. You can, My, you can raise the microphone so you don't get scoliosis talking to us. <laughs> well, thanks. Okay. Um, you know, my, my beautiful wife is sitting in the back. Uh, we're, you know, young, new parents. We're millennials. As you know, that's a big problem that Connecticut has. Ms. Smart talks so, you know, spoke so eloquently about, you know, the old district and, you know, how walkable it is. I'm a New York born. I was born in Brooklyn. I don't know how many of you guys leave Connecticut, but there's a big problem right now in New York State where Young people don't want to drive anymore, believe it or not. We like walkable communities. I chose Old Weathers Field because I'm a history buff, I like history, and I thought, you know, where else, in, I like Connecticut, where else, it, you know, in the state where I could combine the two things I love? Well, Old Weathers Field is the oldest historic district in Connecticut, and it is a great place to live. Connecticut was actually, Connecticut's actually ranked as the best place to raise a child. I am proud to say that my son will hopefully stay in this state when he's my age. And that being said, if you guys create this loophole, which you're gonna do if you approve this in, in, the, histor in the historic district zoning, we're gonna have nothing but concrete houses. I don't want that. And I'm sure you don't want that. If you grew up in Old, old Weathersfield, you're not gonna want anything like that. The gentleman down, that is next to me down there, his daughter is soon to be uh, our, my neighbor who has a young child, which we are you know, excited about. I am begging you guys to um, not approve this application. And you know, let's just be done with this. There's something else that could be put there. This is a mixed use area where we need businesses there for, you know, um, for economic growth. We need tourists in and out of Old Weathersfield. We don't need, uh, you know, we don't need that kind of, we don't need that kind of business in, in Old Weathersfield. That's, that's the truth. Um, I know it was said earlier that we shouldn't address the a specific problem, uh, the specific property, I should say, but Truth be told, you guys know why we're all here. We're all here about that application. That's why we're here. We didn't come here because you were making, you know, a zoning change that, you know, we were all upset about because, you know, we have nothing better to do on a Tuesday night. I drove from New York to come here. I work out of state. Normally, I would be sitting at, I would be sitting at my uncle's house, you know, going over, you know, legislative briefs that I have to do for my boss. I wouldn't be here right now. I drove four plus hours to come here. If you guys understand what that means, four plus hours without traffic. With traffic, I would be, you're talking about a 14 hour day. It's the truth. Now, the application, it's common sense. That, that application is common sense. If you come to where my driveway is and where this, proposed property is supposed to be built. There will be no green there. I'm just curious of where the snow, the garbage, and all the other stuff that's coming from that property is gonna go besides my driveway. There's a big parking issue there. I, I, I don't hear anybody you know, uh, trying to address that. And to say that there are only going to be you know, like four parking space there, are you trying to say that these folks that are gonna be living in this proposed, you know, um, assistant living, ha they have no families, they'll have no visitors. I mean, they're not from space. Everyone have friends. I mean, everyone have friends. So that's just ludicrous. Y you guys need to do the right thing and deny the application and, you know, take a better look at what needs to go there. If, if needs be, put some restrictions on that, on that parcel. Some kind of covenant and restrictions needs to be on that parcel. It, people shouldn't be able to you know, come up with these crazy ideas to destroy a community, because that's what this will do. It will destroy the historic district. Because truth be told, if you put that there, I'm gonna be real honest with you, and maybe in a few years I'll be looking to move. Because to tell me that you're gonna put three garage bays there 
okay? So that ambulance could come in when, if, in case someone falls or something like that. We don't need that. Uh, we really don't. So I'm asking you guys, you know, don't think about my four hour ride that I took to come here, but, you know, deny this application. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Uh, yes, ma'am, up here. Lorraine Powers, 126 Main Street in Old Weathersfield. Um, my husband and I have been living here for 30 years. And uh, the reason I'm here is that this proposed zoning change is very upsetting to us as well as many of our neighbors. And many of us in the neighborhood have made very large investments in our home to maintain and preserve that quaint village appearance that everybody comes here to see. And uh, somebody mentioned that they were concerned about what the other business owners might think about this. Well, what about the residents? Because there are a lot of quality of life issues associated with this type of group residence that might be put into place. Uh, one item is parking. Uh, he mentioned that you know somebody said that they need three places. I'll tell you now that Main Street in Weathersfield is already very congested. Um, between Lucky Lou's, Lucky Lou's, <laughs> um, Village Pizza, other shops, the parking is already overcrowded and there's no place for people to park. So if you add this kind of facility, you have the people that work there, the people that are coming to visit the residents, there's probably delivery trucks that need to come to bring in supplies for whatever uh, food or other items are needed there potentially ambulances or other transportation vehicles. We've already had one fatality years ago on Main Street where a little girl was struck by a car um, because of all the congestion. And I'm just seeing that this is bringing more cars into the neighborhood. Um, another, you have to excuse me, I just have dot points from the conversation. Um, this type of facility I don't think is in keeping with the neighborhood and the other businesses. I mean, it was, the idea was to have some small shops that people could walk around and maybe make some, some purchases, but have a casual day. Um, and this application isn't, you know, you keep saying it's not specific to a specific property, but as mentioned, we all know what property we're talking about. And somebody said, well, there's only 47 other properties that could happen to. Well. What if they all come in tomorrow and say, I want to have some kind of group residence? I mean, the, if you change this rule, there's potential for that. And that's just going to be overcrowding and too much residential re density in a small area. And uh, another issue I noticed was, and I think somebody already pointed out, but I looked at that reg. It doesn't say anything about housing for elderly. It's just general group housing. It's not specific, it really leaves it open to whatever kind of group housing somebody might want to set up. Um, it was mentioned that housing diversity was important. Well, I agree that throughout the town of Weathersfield, diversity is important, but that doesn't mean that we have to have a group home in old Weathersfield, which if you look around is probably the most diverse section of town. We've got homes from various uh, periods of time. We've got a lot of little business shops but I don't think that having this group home enhances the diversity in the neighborhood in, in a way that um, in, brings any higher quality of life to anybody. Um, some, it was mentioned that this would be a great place for the elderly residents to come and live because it's a walkable neighborhood. But we should also consider the quality of life for the people who already live here. And, you know, the more th of this kind of business that you bring in, it really just detracts from, from what the rest of us feel is important in our daily life. Um, oh, and it was mentioned that this uh, residential care facility could help to rehabilitate some of the buildings. 
where we have a lot of businesses that have rehabilitated buildings. We have a couple of beauty parlors, we have a jewelry store, a um, couple little other shops. They've all maintained their buildings and kept them up, so we don't really have a situation where we're desperate for a business to come in and rehabilitate anything. Um, you know, and as far as it goes, I have a private residence, but I feel like the private residences actually enhance a lot of the tourist experience in town. We have a 200-year-old house that we're maintaining and keeping that appearance. People have homes from other periods of time. And the tourists are walking around. They stop and take pictures of our homes. That's one of the things they come to look at. They're not coming to look at a group residence facility. Um, so that's really all I have to say. Um, just know that the people that live in the area are really are not in favor of this kind of thing, and I hope you consider that. Thank you. Thank you. The hand in the back there. Good evening, my name is Frank Satino. I re represent my daughter and my son-in-law, Paul and Danielle Newman, who are gonna move into 32 Church Street. And I wanna explain why they're moving to 32 Church Street. Before making a decision to buy a lot and build a home, we looked around. There were a lot of options. Farmington, West Hartford, Avon, Simsbury, Glastonbury, and they could have built for a lot less. Here's the reason they chose Old Weathersfield. One, to be close to mom and dad. I love my grandchildren. She would have been here tonight. She's with the children. My son-in-law would have been here, but he's working to pay for the added cost that we have to spend to build on 32 Church, which is about $70,000. And I mention that for a specific reason. Those who live in Old Weathersfield inherit something that no one else in Weathersfield has to deal with. And that is the cost of maintaining a property. That is the cost of simply just living there. It's more expensive. If you want to do something in Old Weathersfield, you want to sneeze, go see the Historic Commission. You want to put in your mailbox, go see, go see the Historic Commission. It's a community that has a globe or a protective layer around it. And the purpose of that is to protect that uniqueness that's there. Um, they're working on weekends and it's vibrant, it's full of life. And I'm gonna give you numbers. The house is about $425,000 to build. But if you allow this group home, and I can rent each room for $4,000 a month, I have news for you. I'm coming for an application. Because I'll take $16,000 a month on a $400,000 investment all day long. And the other 47 properties, that are, that, that are allowable for this type of development, they're gonna be here too. What will happen to Old Weathersfield? Right now, those who live in Old Weathersfield aren't there for the money. They're there for the people. And the argument that I made to the Historical Commission when they want me to do all these grandiose things that cost a fortune, I said, it's not the house. It's the people that live in the house. So they walk by the house the first day. Oh, that's a beautiful house. But then they walk by the second day. Uh, the lady in that house, she isn't too nice. Oh, those are wonderful people. And I've got to know so many people in that community. They're just fantastic. But if you turn it into a group home neighborhood, and we really don't know, my, a question I have, if you move into this group home, I heard 150 a day or 4,500 a month. So those who move in to this group home, is there a lease? Are they there for a year? Or can they come for a week? Can they stay for a day? I don't know. I don't know the answer. Do you know the answer? We don't know what we're getting. Everybody has a right to live somewhere. And everybody has a right to live in old Weathersfield. I'm a Trump fan. You wanna come in my neighborhood? You play by my rules. You can't come into my community and change the rules that we have in place to protect our way of life because you want to do something different. Acclimate yourself. You want to bring this development? 
into old Weathersfield, find a way to make it thin. Be transparent. Tell us exactly what you have in mind. Who's going to live there? We don't know that answer. But I'll leave on this note. I'll take $16,000 a month all day long, and that's what you have to deal with, because I'll come and make the application. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Put this mic down. Yeah, you can put the mic down. <laughs> Further down. Okay. Watch out, the manager wants you to get close to Good it. evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. <clears throat> There's got to be someone dissenting in the group. I might as well be that person. <clears throat> First, I just want to remind everybody up here on the commission that it's a Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. It's not the old Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. And the rules of the game should apply to both sides of the track. <clears throat> there was a recent text amendment to a zoning regulation on the wrong side of the track, up where I live. And it's almost the same situation. The text amendment applied to the regulation and not to a specific parcel, which is what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about the regulation. <clears throat> and if it were to be amended, the applicant or any applicant, any one of the 47 potential applicants, would still have to go through the special permit procedure. And all those questions that came up about parking, traffic, what the use would be and how it would operate, those would all be discussed and voted on at the special permit process not the text amendment process. <clears throat> there was mention tonight about what exactly is this group home. And it says in this handout that we received, 2.3 definitions, that this home does not serve pers persons needing skilled medical care or addictive support services. So we're not talking about halfway houses we're not talking about boarding homes. We're talking about 12 people, something around that number, living in one building. And in old Weathersfield, above Village Pizza and Weathersfield Travel, that little mall there, uh, development, there's apartments up above all those businesses. There's at least 12 people living there right across the street from this potential Masonic property. I really don't see what the difference is. And I think, you know, you really should consider what, what you're voting on tonight. You're voting on the text amendment. That doesn't mean it's ever going to get approved. And there was discussions tonight about what it could look like. Well, they still have to go through historic district uh, commission approval. So even if you did change the text amendment uh, and say the Blades property was one of those properties that would be apply for this uh, group home. The exterior of that still has to meet the Historic District Commission guidelines. You're not even going to be able to know what's inside. You're just looking at the outside of the structure. Nothing's going to change. Well, within specific guidelines. It can't change. It can't change. You have to be, you have to get historic district commission approval. So the applicant could possibly get the text amendment changed and never be able to put a group home in, in Old Weathersfield because they wouldn't be able to meet the requirements of the Historic District Commission. So I just hope you'd consider that. Uh, in, and as I, I'm referring to 
Another text amendment that passed marginally, five to four, and very similar questions came up. There was a group of people, not as large as this group, that were opposed to it. It still went through. And several weeks later, the applicant did come back and apply for that special permit. And all those questions were asked, and this commission voted on it. And you got what you got. So I think whatever goes on on one side of the tracks should go on the other side of the tracks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, well, she's already en route. Hi, Renee Starkowski. I live at 472 Main Street. My mother lives on the green. Um, so here's the thing. Um, I've been managing properties for over 23 years. Um, and you're talking about this amendment and then there's the possibility of doing more in town. So let's talk about that on a larger scale. Um, if this goes through and then, you know, you're saying, okay, we can do this in other areas, something about 47 others and whatever that may be. You're talking about having these properties scattered around town. I actually had properties in Wethersfield, and those were properties for individuals that had disabilities. Some of them were addictive, some of them were um, abusive that were being sheltered. Um, and there were issues that we had to deal with, but um, these were shelter homes, and a lot of people in town never knew they existed, and you still don't, but that was the point of them. Um, so having said that, um, something on this scale, and a lot of my properties were elderly housing. In fact, I had Bella Vista in New Haven, which is the largest elderly housing complex in the state, I believe, still. It's 1,542 units, if memory serves me. In any case, um, there's a lot that comes with that. You, um, you have so much going on with health, and then you have um, you have ambulances coming, you have family members coming, you have um, caregivers coming, you have all these things happening. And even in a building that is as small as this one with 11 units, you would be amazed at how much activity will go on. And it will go on. You are going to have all of this happening. You will have an ambulance there at least once a week. It's going to happen. So you have to be prepared for that. You're going to have to deal with the parking, because someone else mentioned that they do have visitors. And they will have visitors. They'll have quite a few visitors. So you're going to have to deal with that. You're also going to have to deal with unauthorized occupants that tend to weasel their way in. And yes, it's a small room, but you'd be amazed at how many of them come. And they want to take care of their granddaughter or their grandson that may have um, an addiction or something of that nature and they want to give them a home or shelter, and then that causes other problems, okay? So you have all of this stuff that comes into play. And nobody ever thinks of this when they're creating a property of this nature. And so they all think, okay, this is a feel-good thing, and it is a feel-good thing. But you have to take into consideration of all the other things that do come along with it. So having said that, if you're looking at this as an opportunity to change this zone, and it's going to affect all of Weathersfield. You have to take this into consideration, that all of that is going to come with it. So I ask you to consider that, OK? Um, and there was a, um, one other thing. So the, there was a mention way back when about, um, about this whole application. And um, the attorney was up here. And I was just curious because there was talk about the age. So, you know, with a residential care home, there isn't necessarily an age, but there also is a disability. So if an individual has a disability, guess what? They can come in. And you know what? Disabilities are awarded at any age. So you could have a young individual move into this home with a disability. And I, I encourage you all to look up the definition of disability, what is considered a disability, okay? And I think you'll be 
interested in that. So, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Larry Powers, 126 Main Street. Um, kind of listened to all this. I'm against the proposal to the change in zoning. Um, if you look at the definition of the village business district, um, it says it's for the intended, it's intended to provide development, maintenance, enhancement of mixed use pedestrian friendly areas and support the enhanced overall community character and the ambience of the historic district. And it, in my mind, does not do that. Um, we did have a study. We put zoning regulations into place to promote that goal. This type of housing was not considered appropriate at that time. Um, this type of facility will increase the amount of traffic um, in our, at the whole Main Street. All, I, I kind of wrote this because we all know the property that's probably going to come up first. Um, it's going to increase traffic. We're already congested especially in the center of Old Weathers Field at Church in um, Maine. Um, we're going to see additional traffic due to delivery trucks, emergency vehicles, transportation, you know, non-emergency transportation of some of these people. Um, parking is going to be needed for visitors, staff, as well as the traffic of them coming and going. This traffic won't be limited to the business day. And one thing we're kind of lucky with with some of the office businesses it's gone for the weekend, so that traffic doesn't compete for um, space in the center of Old Weathers Field. Um, let's see, so this, this area already has traffic and parking issues that will be exasperated by this type of development during peak um, weekend hours that will exceed the capacity of the area. Um, I'm just skipping over some of the stuff that's project specific. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to go to it. Anything that's put in the center of Old Weathersfield, especially if it's in the area of Church, Marsh, and Maine, um, there are going to be emergency vehicles coming and going. Plans I've seen so far, basically we're going to have an ambulance pull in and back out. And do we really need, on a weekend, to have an ambulance trying to back out right across from Village Pizza, where we have that much traffic? The business is already putting, or the business area is already putting cars far down Church Street for parking to get to the businesses. That's a residential zone. So we're already exceeding the capacity of that district. Um, um, again, and the other thing is, this type of business won't help to bring the tourism in. It's, um, you know, it, it's housing, which was also brought up, well, how is that different than the single family housing that's there now? Well, one of the things is this type of housing is going to bring with it ADA requirements. You're now going to have to put in an accessibility ramp. You may have to have generators to supply power because there's medical equipment that needs to run. There's going to be air, you know, just because it's a big building, you're going to have air conditioning compressors. And depending on what lot you are on in Old Weathersfield, that's often right up against your neighbor. They're going to have to listen to that. Um, so this could be a business going in next to a residence, and that residence will have to live with that for the rest of their time in Old Weathersfield. So that does not promote the historic ambience of Old Weathersfield. Um, and I think that's my biggest concern is that any of these buildings, I've gone out of my way to preserve the historic look of, of my home. We put in a lot of money to keep it that way. We like it. It enhances the district. Um, and I did hear a gentleman say, it's both sides of the track should be equal, but until he has to eat the additional costs I have to eat, I expect protection from the historic district as well as cost. And we have a plan. It was based on a study. This was deemed inappropriate use, not included as a type of use we want. So I'm hoping you will reject it. Um, and maybe a question I have is, based on what I've heard is, this type of housing would be under state control. What the regulations are for parking, lighting, facilities. Do you want to give that control up in Old Weathersfield to the state? Do you want to have somebody come in with a plan and then turn around a week later and say, well, I have to do it, the state says so. 
you know, is that something we want to see happen? Um, and also, given the way I've read the regulations, we could have a Trinity frat house on Main Street. That would be kind of interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, in the back. Billy Logan, 318 Hartford Avenue. Um, I am just opposed to a zone change in the Village Business District, um, no matter what it is. We studied this for maybe four or five years, well before Peter Gillespie was here. We listened to, we went over it with Stuart Popper. It is finely tuned. It, we talked about it and talked about it. And we had meetings and all of the members, the population of Old Weathersfield came. Please do not change it. These buildings are allowed or in almost any other place, residential or business area in Weathersfield. This is the only, village business is for village business. Please do not change it. It's not necessary. They can go anywhere, anywhere else in the town of Wethersfield, even up on Rich Road. <laughs> Sorry. But we specifically, did, there had to have been a reason why this is written into the regulations when other things are not. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. I figured I should go next since we're both short and I won't have to change the, um, <laughs> the microphone. Clear me, 373 Main Street. Um, I've got all kinds of screechy notes, so bear with me. Um, you know, to get back to something that Dan said earlier, it really is the jewel of Weathersfield. We have a very unique um, circum set of circumstances down in Old Weathersfield. Um, and we all have to work to preserve that. And I think that the turnout here and the letters that you all have piled up are an indication of how much the residents in Old Weathersfield care about the, the business district. It's different. It's not like a residential situation. It's a mix of business and residents. And that balance has to be kept. I don't think that we've heard here tonight a compelling reason to change and redirect the plan of conservation in the Old Weathersfield plan. The plan of conservation specifically did not con call out the business district as a site for housing diversity. The Old Weathersfield plan specifically talks about sufficient concentration of retail uses. What I do think we've heard are some assumptions. So we've heard a very broad definition of a residential care home and has been discussed many, many times. Really minimal, quali minimal requirements for that. We can't assume that they're going to be older. We can't assume that they're going to be ambulatory. What we know is it's two or more people, not related, who need shelter, food, and laundry. And that's it. It doesn't have to be a lot of people. It could be small, a small number of people, excuse me. I don't think we can make an assumption about the number of applications that would come in or the number of properties that would be appropriate. I actually drove down from Heart Seed down to Garden and thought, gosh, there are a lot of properties that could, that could be appropriate with some parking in the back, housing could be changed around. Um, what I think this would definitely do is to open up the possibility of a shift in the balance between business and retail. It, these, these, these structures are wonderful in many ways, these facilities, but they represent an opportunity cost for the district because if it's one of these, it's not a single family home and it's not a business. We need businesses in the district to stay vibrant which is a word you've heard lots and lots and lots before. Um, so I hope that you will consider that as you think about changing, changing regulations that would have broad-reaching changes. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Yes. I figured I'd follow Claire because she's a neighbor and I have intricate plans at some point to swap homes with her, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for a different meeting. So Andrew Salek, 65 State Street. And I just, I'll be brief as well. I think that, <clears throat> to be honest with you, this, the proposal tonight, you know, for this development is a ridiculous proposal for this business district. I hope the commission is uh, in tune with what we've seen. I think there's a lot of people that are very much opposed to this development. Unfortunately, we don't have as many people in the room tonight as I've seen on social media. You've probably heard of Next Door, Old Weathersfield. There's a a thread that goes on for many, many comments, which Judy, I echo your comments. You were a participant in that group there. So uh, I know a lot of people weren't able to come tonight, but there's a lot of people that are certainly opposed to this project. So uh, I have a wife and two young kids. We love being able to walk to the businesses in Old Weathersfield. I see uh, some folks here in the room that uh, I don't want to mention names because I don't want to seem like we're taking sides here, but we talk about the Weathersfield Country Store. We talk about Heirloom Market what they've done over the last couple years. We talk about Lucky Lou's. We're really seeing a big influx of people that are coming to Old Weathersfield to are you know, visiting these businesses. So it's, it's very, very important. I think the proposal tonight, with all due respect to Attorney Whitney, uh, was probably the most vague, ambiguous proposal that I could have ever imagined um, with very little statistics and data. I know it's a zoning change and we've all gone back to the fact that it's really just a district zoning change, but I think people that are here tonight understand that it's for a specific lot, so I think that's important. Um, furthermore, I think the tourist traffic is really, really important for that business district, so we wanna continue to support that tourist traffic. I think it's very, very important for the vibrancy. I know we keep on using that word throughout the night is the vibrancy of Old Weathersfield. Um, so ultimately, again, I want to keep it brief. Brief, I wasn't sure how to really step up. I see a lot of good contributors to the evening and, and opposition to this proposal. Uh, I think, again, there's a lot more power and movement behind this opposition that's really not visible here tonight, but you've seen it on Facebook, you've seen it on Nextdoor. Uh, it's just tough when you schedule a meeting on a Tuesday night at seven o'clock, you really can't get as many participants as you know maybe you would hope. Uh, but certainly I think that uh, you know moving forward, um, you know this is, is not in the best interests of that plan that we talked about earlier tonight, the economic study, you know trying to get feet on in old Weathersfield, trying to bring people to the business district. Uh, I think it's very, very, very important. So again, vehemently opposed to the proposal, um, but happy to be here and support with all those other people that are also opposed. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sir. Good evening again. Robert Smart, 62 Church Street. You've gotten a lot of comments, and I endorse pointing out the trouble and difficulty with this. You've also heard and you've lived and seen that Old Weathersfield area is a very desirable place to live. It's a constantly evolving situation, and it will continue to evolve in the future. And I point out that the residential owners, the business owners, working with our regulations and working with you folks and your predecessors has resulted in that being a very, very desirable place to live. No one seems to have disputed that. Is there a need to change those regulations in such a drastic fashion such that it would benefit one specific parcel initially and one specific type of use? No, there is not a need for that change. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public wishing to speak? Yes, sir. Microphone joke inserted here. Raise the <laughs> microphone. Um, <clears throat> Rob O'Connor, I'm at 180 Main Street. Um, we've, we found ourselves basically in the, in the middle of the village uh, business district, district two years ago, so I'm, I'm sort of a neophyte, but one of the things that, that really has struck me is that the, um, the residential and business 
uh, relationship. It's about connections. And it's about, we, we have, we're, we basically have learned that our neighbors are uh, Chester Buckley um, Bed and Breakfast, and it's a business running there. And we as residents have connected with them. They came over and connected with us as soon as we moved in. The um, restaurant across the street, the Old Town restaurant, I want to do like uh, business uh, promotion, but um, the first person that came in and gave us a welcome basket was a restaurant owner. And I think that that, that connection is important. Um, the village residences and businesses exist for each other because of a connection. And I think that this building or any kind of buildings that result in you waiving this lease um, um, rules uh, to let a facility like the one you're talking about in is not about connections. It's a building that's gonna exist almost like a, an alien pod in a place where people are trying to build connections. Those people are not gonna have connections to the neighborhood. They might walk among us, but they're not gonna be part of what weaves the fabric of the, of the village business district. So I'm just, um, I'm opposed to the, the change and I hope you, you follow that, so thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on this application? Yes? No? No, you can come on up. You'll be next. All right, John Jakubowski from 97 State Street. Um, I'll keep it brief. I had some things to say, but I think we've beaten it like a dead horse. Um, I'm opposed. Um, I think you said it good. Um, you guys went over the regulations probably with a fine tooth comb, and back then you put it in the regulations that these are not allowed, and then you said that we have to look at it as a whole, um, the whole district, and it doesn't fit what we're trying to achieve here. Um, we have a couple thriving um, businesses that have been there for a while and a couple new businesses that are doing well and um, I don't think you can put that all in jeopardy for something like this especially when it was in the regulations um, that it's not allowed that's it thank you thank you Good evening, I'm Amy Woodorf. Uh, I live at 17 Center Street uh, and I work at 150 Main Street. Um, I'm the Executive Director of Weathersfield Historical Society. Um, I'm here speaking as a private citizen, but with the perspective that I have. Um, uh, the historic preservation movement in Weathersfield and to create the historic district goes back 100 years and it was in reaction to historic buildings being torn down and what we call the Baskin block where Village Pizza is and um, some other beloved businesses are now. Um, and now that building is so old it qualifies um, as a historic building. Um, but the people in Old Weathersfield, in fact the whole town of Weathersfield, the membership of Weathersfield Historical Society, which is a private nonprofit, come from all over town and some places outside of town. Some of our daughter towns like Rocky Hill uh, or Newington or Glastonbury, but they're people that care about the culture of Weathersfield. That is the Historical Society's primary mission is the history and culture of Weathersfield. Um, and that's what makes it special. And people have been working to preserve that very carefully, very hard for 100 years. And many of them are in this room, um, people that we can talk about from years ago, Jared Butler Standish, um, uh, John Willard, uh, Ann Kukro. Um, there's, there's many people that have worked very hard to preserve the historic district the way it is, and many of those people are here tonight. Um, Martha Smart gives us many, many hours. Um, uh, Judy Keene's foundation helps fund important educational programs for us. These people invest their time and their money um, in preserving what we have in the historic district and have worked very hard and been very careful um, in the master plan, in the zoning regulations to preserve what people that have come before us um, have put in place and we hope that it will remain for people that come after us. So um, personally, I am against um, this zoning change 
and uh, support all the work that all the residents of Old Wethersfield have done for the past hundred years. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, at this point, I guess to, oh, okay, come on up, please. I'm gonna do a, some dramatic reading if, okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Christina Surgeon, and I live at 16 Church Street, and I'd be tooting a dead horse if I said the same things that my husband said, that we have a four-year-old. Um, we moved to an historic district because we love history, we love culture. And as the gentleman down there said earlier, it would have, he got a welcome basket. He made connections, but there was no connection made with us or no notice given to us regarding what was going to happen in our backyard. And for me, I'd say not in my backyard because there are so many things at stake for me growing a, a child in a community that I had anticipated would be one that is filled with vibrancy of the community and people and the connections you make within that community. And to have a residential facility being placed in my backyard where I'll have to deal with ambulances, I'll have to deal with parking issues, it really doesn't make sense to me. And I get emotional because of it, because it's just ridiculous in my mind that that sort of thing could come to the community that I want to raise a son in. And I will harp on what many others have said. I'm opposed to this. It is insane. I don't think it warrants being in my community or where I plan to raise my son. So think about that. And I thank you for listening to everyone else who came up here and opposed it. And I'd hope that you'd make the right decision. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Okay. My name is Linda Penn, Linda Sherman Penn, and I live at 254 Whippoorwill Road in Old Lyme. But I grew up in Old Weathersfield at 223 Main Street. Um, well, let me say first of all that I oppose this proposal. I have a one-page speech that I was going to read, but all the points that I was going to make have been eloquently made by everyone who spoke before me. So I'm simply going to say that basically I, I oppose the proposal uh, because of the parking situation, which is already challenging, and because of certain elements of the specific Masonic Hall project that I just can't agree with. One of them is their uh, refuse uh, plan, or refuse disposal plan, and the other is I did not see any uh, area reserved for the residents' recreational use in good weather. Where can these people uh, sit comfortably with a degree of privacy? and enjoy quiet conversation, entertain their visitors, or just enjoy a cool summer breeze. Um, but while I'm up here, <laughs> I'd like to say, I'd like to set the record straight. Um, my father was the first, established the first ethical pharmacy in Old Weathersfield, and his name was Lewis Sherman. My grandfather built the apartment building where uh, uh, which is directly opposite uh, the Masonic Temple, or the Masonic Hall, and his name was Isidore Sherman. When the building was built by my grandfather, its name was, and still is, the Central Block. And that's how it's referred to in most of the historic documents uh, which are housed in Town Hall. So it is not the Baskin Building. Uh, Abraham Baskin 
was my stepfather, my mother's second husband, a wonderful man, but no relation to the Shermans. Thank you. Duly noted. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else? Um, in light of that, uh, I'll kind of speed read through some correspondence that we received. One uh, came this evening and was not distributed to the commission in time uh, from Michael Clark, owner of the Main Street Creamery. I'm writing this letter to express opposition to the proposed zone changes in Old Weathersfield Business District. My concerns over the matter are as a residential property owner, 330 Main Street, where I live with my family, and as a business and commercial property owner, 271 Main Street, Main Street Creamery. In, a, in relation to the proposed development of the Mason Building, I feel there should be a coordinated effort to utilize the property's previous study results in collaboration with the current owner of the property. To that end, I am happy to volunteer my time to recruit a business that would benefit the community and business owners more than the current proposed project will. Uh, next is a letter from Barbara J. Ruth, 79 Main Street. I've reviewed the documentation that has been submitted by Jones Hollow Asok uh, relative to the requested amendments to the zoning regulations that govern the Weathersfield B Village Business District. I have reviewed this application through two lens. First, I'm a longtime close neighbor, residential neighbor of the village district. Secondly, I've looked at it as an attorney. While I make no claim to having expertise in zoning matters, I see some basic legal issues that concern me and should concern the commission. As a neighbor of the village business district, I see no merit in the proposed zone change. In my opinion, the proposed zone change brings no benefit to the business district and is not compatible with the historic district that surrounds the business district. It is clear that the requested zone change is reasonably applicable to only one property in the business district, the former Masonic Hall. This property is one that poses significant challenges. It's a very large building on a small piece of land. It's in the very heart of Old Weathersfield on one of the most prominent corners in the historic district. Uh, the organization that wishes to develop this piece of property has already aired their various and frequently changing plans before the HDC, which denied a certificate of appropriateness uh, concerns raised regarding the plan before HDC that had to do with the economics of the project which were not within the purview of the HDC. We were repeatedly told that the economic issues were more within the purview of PZC. Folks knowledgeable about the housing needs of healthy old people and the economics of various housing options for healthy old people were of the opinion that the project being proposed was not economically viable. If I were asked to characterize the kind of facility that is being sought to be added to the zoning regulations to benefit the owners of the former Masonic Hall, I would call it a motel with a shared bathroom where old people could stay as long as they were healthy and could pay about $150 a day, meals would be included. The proposed facility would have no significant parking, important because many healthy old people still drive, and would lack reasonable yard space for recreation of any kind for for the healthy old people. As a lawyer, several things struck me as I reviewed the land use application. I do not think the form was filled out completely or candidly. I question who the applicant is. I have researched, quote, Jones Hollow Asok. I can find no legal entity by that name. The property owner's address and phone number is not complete. I also think that NA was not an appropriate term to be filled in for the property address. I think that the property address should be articulated because it's generally known that the only property this application is about is the former Masonic Hall. An application that comes before this commission should be candidly and completely filled out so as to give adequate notice to the commission and the taxpaying public. It seems pretty clear that the zoning change side is spot zoning because it clearly would only affect one property in the village business district, the former Masonic Hall. Spot zoning refers to zoning by the legislative body that moves a property from one zone to another on the zoning map to allow a more intensive use. Factors that can and in this case should be considered include the size of the spot zone site, whether it serves a public need or purpose or the general welfare, whether it's compatible with the surrounding area and whether it is consistent with a comprehensive plan. In this case, the site that would benefit from the spot zoning is too small for the facility being proposed. There's inadequate parting and no parking and no outdoor space to provide any semblances of outdoor recreational space. 
It's questionable whether the proposed facility would serve a public need or purpose or general welfare of healthy old people. There are a significant number of housing options for healthy old people in the region given the proposed cost, limitation of services, and the type of facility being proposed. To put it more plainly, for the projected cost of 4,500 to 5,000 a month, a healthy old person could find much nicer digs. A long-term motel-like residence, which is what the proposed facility would most closely resemble, is incompatible with a small business, single family, and two family residences that make up the surrounding neighborhood. Finally, the proposed zone change, which only affects one property, is not compatible with a comprehensive plan for either the village, village business district or the old Weathersfield master plan. I urge planning and zoning to deny this application for one of the many reasons I've stated. I regret that I cannot be in attendance at the meeting as I'm out of state on a family vacation. Um, there was a letter from Judy Keene dated June 18th, which is pretty well summarized by what she said tonight. Um, letter June 17th from Cynthia and Howard Greenblatt. Uh, we're unable to attend the meeting, would like our comments read into the public record. We're strongly opposed to the proposed zone change. <clears throat> By design, the village business district is intended to provide for the development, maintenance, and, and enhancement of mixed-use pedestrian-friendly areas that support and enhance overall community character and the ambiance of this historic district. The intent of this special zoning was to create a mix of appropriate businesses and residences that would preserve the historic character of the area. Since 2008, there has been an extraordinary renaissance in the VB district. Old Weathersfield has become a destination to walk, eat, shop, and take part in cultural activities that reflect our values and heritage. Using the historic structures in the village for congregate housing is incompatible with the existing uses present there and not compatible with the neighborhood. Congregate housing defined as a residence facility for elderly or disabled residents that contains independent units with provision for cooking, eating, sanitation, and sleeping, provides communal dining facilities or other appropriate services such as security, housekeeping, organized social and recreational activities, indoor transportation, and that is appropriately staffed on a 24-hour-a-day basis is not a suitable or desired use for many historic homes and structures in the village business district. Weathersfield has always prided itself in the character, originality, and number of historic homes within our borders. Carving homes and buildings into small residential units of 350 to 400 square feet would destroy the integrity of these structures and could arguably have a detrimental effect on property values and development in the village business district and in Weathersfield as a community. We make no judgment on the need for congregate or residential housing or its value. Instead, we feel that a zoning change to allow congregate residential housing in the village business district would be detrimental to the neighborhood, incompatible with the present uses of homes and buildings in the village business district, that the construction of congregate housing will hinder community development, and that it is not consistent with our goal to conserve our treasured historic structures. Please do not approve any zoning text change to the village business district that would allow congregate residential housing. Um, email dated June 18th to the commission from Carol Szymanski, 18 Megat Park. Residential care homes are appropriate in most multifamily districts and some single family districts throughout the town of Weathersfield. However, I do not support the proposed zone text amendment which would allow residential care homes in the tiny, tightly knit VB district on Main Street. Weathersfield has minimal land area zone for business uses, too few options for locating businesses to serve the residents and visitors we host. The few business areas we do have should be reserved for true business uses which complement one another and encourage more feet on the street. Old Weathersfield is our only walkable downtown area. No one walks on the Silas Dean Highway. We should strengthen and increase our restaurant and retail uses on Main Street to encourage walkability. After visiting our historic district, tourists and residents seek out amenities such as restaurants, retail, and even more museums. No one is going to stop in at a private residential care facility. One town commission study even suggested a performance space for the Masonic Hall. What a creative and excellent potential direction this might lead Main Street toward. I believe West Hartford's Masonic Hall hosts three different non-residential uses and recently sold for over a million dollars. 
Residential care homes should have ample parking, an appreciable amount of green space, outdoor amenities, trees, and nature. The Masonic Hall is not ideally suited for this use and has no land for the required on-site parking ability. And if the two stunning and awe-inspiring behemoth trees in front of the building are cut down, this unwieldy brick building will be far less attractive to pedestrians and the street will be har far hotter and less pleasant to bear. Might as well remove the street benches in front if the trees are cut. I implore you not to amend the zoning regulations to house residential care unit uses in what should be a far more active and engaged corner in one of our few business districts. Um, I don't know who Kim is, but it's from Joseph and Lisa Gangloff. We are writing in support of Frank and Corrine DeBacco building a residential care home at 245 Main Street in Old Weathersfield. We strongly believe that the restoration would be an asset for the community. Since we've lived in Weathersfield, the property has been run down and vacant. We have often commented on how nice it would be for someone to fix it up and bring the charm of Old Weathersfield to this property. It would be wonderful them, for them to build a home that would give the elderly the option to live in charming Old Weathersfield instead of living alone depressed in their home with caregivers coming in and out to help them. The residents would be able to enjoy each other's company and support as well as take advantage of all that Weathersfield has to offer. We've known the DeBacos for many years and know that any project they undertake will be amazing and add value to the community. Frank's experience of construction, reliability, and attention to detail along with Corrine's vast knowledge of nursing and caring for the elderly are the perfect match to make this project a success. Please allow them to bring this property the love and attention it so desperately needs and give the elderly the opportunity to enjoy their golden years in Old Weathersfield. Thanks for your time and consideration. Um, last one, Timothy Lenartz, 30 Cold Colonel Chester Drive. I'm writing to express my support for the proposed project for 245 Main Street. In my opinion, it will be a win-win for the town, especially Old Weathersfield. The building is blighted and needs to be put to good use. Mr. DeBacco is a very respected builder who builds a quality product, and I think the town should proceed with this to help the folks who want to live together but don't need dedicated care. Feel free to contact me anytime as I live and support our lovely town. Okay. Um, does anyone else? Thanks, sir, <laughs> does anyone else wish to speak? Um, I just remind you that if. You know, we're going to ask the applicant to come back up and address the, the comments that were made. Um, and there may or may not be additional public comment after that. So, you know, if we do decide to close the public hearing, we can't have, you know, back and forth and further input from the public um, during the deliberation stage. So if there's anything anybody wants to say, I, I would invite you to do so now. Yes. As I said, I'm Judy Keene from 126 Broad Street. Two things. One, the last two documents that you just read, the last two letters, referred only to the Masonic Hall. And this hearing is not about the Masonic Hall, correct? Right. Yeah, so those should not be even considered in the, um, in the decision. Um, the other thing is that uh, somebody asked earlier, uh, on the internet, is there a description of other residential care homes um, in the state of Connecticut? And I did do a search, and I have to say that the majority of them were uh, at the ones that I saw. I did not see uh, go into every single one, but the majority of the ones that I saw, actually all, were uh, apartment situations, not a congregate living situation. And many of them were supported by the town that they were in or by the state of Connecticut. So there is a little difference between um, residential care homes or facilities. Just keep that in mind. This is a dense population in this particular district to encourage um, homes to now have 12 people. That's a lot of people in one area. Thank you. Thank you. And it, can we just ask the to clarify the one you, can, you can come up here and speak into the microphone and ask the commission anything you want to have 
the applicant answer. I'm not opposed to seniors having a place to live. Our grandmother who lived with us moved into a senior home. She was in her glory. She was surrounded by individuals her age. So if this applicant could tell me that this is for seniors who are making a long term or as long as possible an investment in their new living environment, whereas there's a lease involved and they're not there for a week and then they're gone. So the question I want the applicant to answer is, what are the terms, what are the parameters for which an individual, a senior, mm -hmm. will live in this community? Or, or, we spoke of disabilities, is this this young child, 18, 20 year old, who maybe has a drug addiction, that's a disability, is he coming into the community? We all have, to, we all have, a, all have the right to have a place to live. I just want to know who's coming into my neighborhood. So if you can clarify the parameters for which a person will occupy that space, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, Lorraine Powers, I just had two follow-up comments. Uh, a point was made that there were already apartments above Village Pizza, and what's the difference? There's a huge difference. Those are full-size apartments with a lot more square footage with 12 people or however many live there. They have a full parking lot in the back for all of their cars. There's even a little garden area out there. That's a lot different than one house with people having one room all crammed into uh, that small space. So, so to my mind, the density of the population is, is really a, a key problem. And then um, also somebody made a comment that this is only a text change in the zoning regs. Well, that may be on the surface, but if you allow this change, then that opens the door for this becoming a reality. So I would really hate to see that change made because then you've opened the floodgates. Thank you. Thank you. I just want uh, the board to take into consideration what, well, really everything everyone has said. And, um, but above all, um, you know, um, Mr. Roberts, you said it wasn't in, uh, it wasn't specific to any particular property. So it's not specific to any particular property, but basically we know why we're all here. But let's be realistic about something. If you, if you do this zone change, what potentially will happen and what could happen is you now open up the door for myself, and I will be honest with you, possibly if you do that, I'm not gonna sell that house that's there, I'm gonna leave, and I'm gonna rent the room single like New York. Um, that's concrete housing, um, you know, and truth be told, I'm now using what I've learned in my job you know, land use, you know, when you do mixed use on properties, you know, there's a reason why business districts are zoned the way they are, and you know, um, you know commercial is zoned completely different from residential, and mixed use is, is zoned specifically, has a uniqueness about it, where it's, you know, sla residential slash, you know, commercial, where you have businesses, apartments on top of a, of a building, or, you know, something like that, where it gives a unique feel to that area. Um, you know, it, it creates this kind of downtown feel for the people that come there and visit. You know, this um, zone change is gonna change that. Why would you spend taxpayers' money to do a study for years or months to now, you know, completely dismantle that for, to basically open a loophole for people to do basically whatever they, they wanna do? You know, uh, just one last thing. I'm sure, I don't know how many of you guys know about Airbnb and what that's doing to many states and many historic districts, like I will use Sag Harbor, which is also a historic district. Um, and, you know, just like um, 
old Wethersfield and some of the things that it's facing now. If you if you open that door, you're gonna get a lot of people coming, you know, renting rooms, you know, like, you know, no tomorrow. Like, that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna have congregate housing here. If you open that door, you will. You're gonna regret it. I'm gonna be honest with you. You will, because I'm gonna move, but I'm not selling the house. That's all. Thank you. Tom, and then the person I can't see. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. I just want to reiterate, most of the comments that we heard tonight address a specific property, even though we're not supposed to be addressing a specific property. Tonight's meeting is about a text change and all the people in the audience that have concerns about what's going to happen with the Masonic Hall are, would be more effective at the next meeting should you decide to approve the text amendment. The applicant will still have to apply for a special permit and all the details, whether it be age restrictions or square footage or green space or parking, all those factors have to come out in the open during the special permit application. And I think that's when that should be discussed and that that's what should affect your decision tonight is the zoning change, just what the applicant asked for. It doesn't say it's going to get approved. It doesn't say everybody's going to be able to rent their houses out in rooms. They would have to apply for a special permit and go through the same process. And then you could vote based on those merits. Secondly, I, th I think it's kind of sad that there's a big problem with having 12 seniors who may be Wethersfield residents. I may wish to downsize at some point in the future and want to be able to live in old Wethersfield and take the elevator down to the next floor and walk to Village Pizza or to the Cove or whatever I want to do. And it seems like, you know, these potential Wethersfield residents are being earmarked as some kind of, I don't know what the word is, a non-citizen. I don't see any problem with having 12 seniors move into old Wethersfield and become part of the culture and part of the neighborhood and be able to walk down the street and get an ice cream and socialize with other people and do all the kinds of things that you want to do when you're retired. And, you know, having a single family home when you're 70 years old, you may not want to have to worry about who's going to cut the grass and plow the snow and, and do all these other things. Maybe you're single and you don't want to have to cook, so they're going to provide meals for you. And I don't see any problem with that. And uh, I think uh, you should consider all that when you vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> um. Yeah, since you haven't spoken yet. Uh, Paul Mead, 373 Main Street. Uh, first of all, I'd like to echo uh, what has been said in opposition to this proposal by various people, especially my wife. Everything that she said is absolutely uh, true and correct. <laughs> but um, <laughs> The, the, the point that I would like to make is that um, we're being asked here, or you're being asked here, to consider this fairly radical change in the uh, regulations governing the, uh, the Wethersfield Business District, the old Wethersfield Business District. And um, we're asked to, you're asked to consider that without actually addressing the interested party who's making the proposal here. Um, and it seems to me that in the absence of the proposal by the interested party here, there's absolutely no reason to change the regulations. There's no demand for it. There's no groundswell from the community. We don't have an outcry here where people are saying we need more residential, uh, uh, excuse me, residential group homes in the district. 
again, in the absence of one interested party who, on the one hand, says that their proposal that they're eventually going to make is going to be a great thing, but we're not supposed to take it into account here, there is absolutely no reason to even consider this proposal. We have a Wethersfield business district that has some issues and problems, but it works. It works the way it is. Um, people who don't haven't had previous involvement in this district are coming in and asking for a change. And I say, let's not change it until we have a reason. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Larry Powers, 126 Main Street. And just to follow up, this is not about having old people or anyone else move into the area, but it's about the fact that we had a study. We have a finely crafted set of zoning regulations to support that study. And decisions were made. They're guiding the town. And yes, we now have a request for a change that really doesn't seem necessary and was ruled out at one point as not being appropriate. And again, these type of developments are going to require extensive changes to the outside of buildings, which are going to impact the historic district. I think given the history of our regs, the study that went in behind them, this is a pretty serious decision that really should be given some thought. And, and obviously, I'm opposed, but I, I don't think it should be made quickly and without due, due diligence on the issue. Thanks. Can I answer, uh, can I have a question? I have a question sure. for you, sir. So you, just to be clear, you indicated that when the plan was being developed, that uh, like a type of this type of, this type of facility was considered, but it was ruled out. Like this is not what we want. I am right? making that assumption based okay. on the fact that it has not been included. Okay. And that I assume that any study considered all types of, okay. of use. Okay. And change. So that thank would you. be an assumption. On my okay. Part, to be clear. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Billy. Billy Logan, uh, 318 Hartford Avenue. Uh, there is, uh, you can have congregate housing in the rest of Old Weathersfield. It's not, it's just the village business that is zoned this way. It is not. Hartford Avenue has congregate housing. Megat Park has congregate housing. So it's not that we're supposed to be this exclusive district, it was voted, it was studied and studied and studied. Again, five years, uh, two planners we have gone through that studied this, and it was taken out. It was not allowed. We didn't want it, okay? Um, that, it, uh, it, we, as far as I know, um, it has maybe Peter could tell you whether this has ever come up before, but I do not believe it has. But it's not all of Old Weathersfield. We are only talking village business district, which has 47 properties in it. Thank you. Thank you. I won't get up again. <laughs> I won't call on you. <laughs> Anyone else? Last call. Um, if not, invite the applicant to come back up. I want to ask the applicant a question. Too. Well, let's let her speak first. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I think it's surprising and disappointing that people in Old Weathersfield don't want elderly citizens to live among them when it's such a desirable place to live. <laughs> Okay, when it's let's such a, try to continue with our civility here. It's a desirable place to live, and the, and the elderly would 
enjoy living there and would enjoy all the advantages of the town, of this part of the town. Um, putting aside anything about the Masonic Hall, because that's not what we're here talking about tonight. Um, when you, if you were to pass this, this, this change to your regulations, <coughs> and I would point out that zoning regulations are not carved in stone. Things change through the years. You know that. You change your regulations on a pretty fairly regular basis, I would imagine, to accommodate changes in different uses, in different e economic situations, in different things in the town that need accommodating. This is one of those. If you were to approve this change um, and someone were to come in with an application, all the things that are raised tonight would come up. If there's an application where the traffic didn't work, you wouldn't approve it. If there is an application where the historic nature of a building was destroyed, you wouldn't approve it and the Historic District Commission wouldn't approve it. If there was an application that changed the character of this part of town, which is so important, you wouldn't approve it. You have a huge amount of authority over what you approve. The basics are, given that you have that much authority, is it appropriate to have a facility that's going to look like any normal single family residence and allow elderly citizens to live there and to enjoy the advantages of living in this part of Old Weathersfield. It's a, it's a combined residential business district. This is a business that provides residential opportunities for senior citizens. As someone suggested, and I agree, most likely people who already live in Weathersfield would like to continue to live here. And this would provide a vehicle to allow them to do it. To answer some of the questions that came up, of course it would, people would not stay here short term. There would be a long term arrangement for people to live here. Um, unlike a bed and breakfast, and I think there may be a bed and breakfast already in this facility, I mean in this, in this district. That would not be the situation for this. This would be a long term um, arrangement for the, for the citizens, for the residents. Um, as I said, you have a great deal of authority. This simply provides an opportunity for people, if all the conditions are appropriate, if all the criteria are met, to allow a few people to live in Old Weathersfield. And we hope that you will consider it carefully. Thank you. Does anybody yeah, have hold on fine? Hold, I have a question. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Um, you have a question for the applicant? Yeah, I do. Why did you come in and ask the whole district to be allow this? Why not part of it? Are you afraid of, and I'll be very blunt here, uh, professionals understand this, the uh, uh, spot zoning, you're afraid of that maybe? Uh, why couldn't you ask for only a few parcels of land to be, and from the business district to be allowed this kind of thing? Uh, I think that would be spot zoning. My understanding. You really do. Yeah, I do. I you think there would be the danger <laughs> of, of that being perceived a whole as spot section zoning. Of the, of, of the district. Where, this is a large district, it's in my mind. And, uh, you know, why did you ask for the whole thing? I mean, it goes all the way down to Garden Street. I, I do think you're unlikely to be inundated with applications, which has been suggested. But my understanding was it, it, the change needed to apply to a whole district, whichever district. Or you were told that. It was my understanding, yes. Well, I think it's kind of the uniformity principle of zoning. Yeah. Yeah, well, I understand the spot zoning, too. <coughs> In the old days, they call that. It's always been a question what spot zoning is, I mean, unless case law recently. It's sort of like it's pornography. It's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. So, anyway, that's why I was asking because it affects a very, very large area. Although it this in a very large area. Although I suspect that of those forty-seven potential sites, very few of them would be appropriate for this use. 
but I. Um, I'm these just, can come down eventually in the future, in one place or another, and, and maybe the historic district wouldn't allow it, but they might. If so, that's why I was asking. That. Right. Does anybody else have? Well, I was going to ask the same question because if you read through these regulations, there are general conditions in which the floor the floor to ceiling has to be eight feet and the one i don't like is institutions caring for more than four people must comply to the state fire code that means you're basically has anyone done a study in this area of the 46 inches how many of these buildings can actually be used i mean i don't i know the i don't think so the Not that I call which was a place of gathering um, probably could make it, but I think we're looking at a very big space where once you put those clauses in, you're bringing it down to maybe three places that I can think of. Uh, that may be so the case. So that's why I'm asking, why are we looking at the big island when we really should be looking at, you know, a few places on it? Well, I think for, for, for uniformity, it has to apply to the whole district. But you're probably right that there are very few I'm more specific concerned with number sites. Nine, the fact that anyone who has two residents doesn't have to fire the, does, doesn't have to do with the fire code. I don't know this fire code number off my hand, back of my hand, but it's a loophole <coughs> I don't like. It probably It says anyone an institution that has two resident two or three residents doesn't have to meet the state fire building code. That's very peculiar, and I can't imagine that your fire states, marshal would agree with it. Yet it states down below it that it must meet the fire marshals. I was it's, gonna say, I, it's, I, I mean, it's, a, it's a loophole in here that's a little. I, I don't think your fire marshal way. would uh, buy into that. Yeah. I'm just, I just have read through it for the last meeting for this meeting, and there's a, it's like all state regulations. There's ups and downs in it. Yep. And reading this, unless you have a lot of money and you have the right size building, you're not going to build in this, this district. Unless you're building, you're going to tear down a building and build a new one. It, it, it would involve, I think converting any building to this use would involve a huge investment. But I just wondered if anyone had ever done a study to looking at the 46. <coughs> not that I'm aware <coughs> of. Um, I, I, and we're back to that 21-page document from the public health. Yeah, and which has uh, probably 30, 30 or 40 items that I, that I could bring to our attention at the next hearing if it ever happened. But the facts are that we are in a text review with a very specific focus, and that's what we're here for tonight. But uh, I, I find that 21 pages a little bit of a distraction for your presentation today with compliment to I, I understand to that, but it, it seemed like it would be something that would be of interest to you. I'm just glad I didn't have to read it. <laughs> no, I did, frankly, not to argue with you, but I, I did find it somewhat helpful to, to get a sense as to what oh. type of regulatory environment these facilities are, are subject to and, and what's involved. And it, it, it seems daunting. It's massive. I agree. Okay, anything else for the applicant? Thank you. Um, at this point, I guess the question is, is there any additional information that you believe is necessary um, to find or learn before we close the public hearing? I, I think we've heard comprehensive testimony from both sides of the issue, and I am comfortable to move ahead. Okay. Yeah. On, on my part, uh, I, I concur we've heard a lot of evidence from both sides. What I haven't heard is you know, a you know, identification of what is the, the, you know, the need, the, you know, the population need for this type of you know, housing situation. Um, you know, how many you know, people within Wethersfield or the metro area or uh, et cetera that would be eligible or, or would have this kind of housing applicable to fit their particular needs. And I haven't seen you know, any connection with, say, the Connecticut Department of Aging 
or anything that, that relates to you know, being able to identify the, the need for, uh, for this. But uh, no, I'm, having said that, uh, I'm ready to move ahead if, if the rest of the commission members are, are, are satisfied. George. Yeah, I'm going to say something, and it's kind of a criticism of the application, and I think it's coming in the questions from this commission right now, a few of us, that there wasn't a good enough and in deep type presentation of many aspects. And the only clue we get is, is maybe the state requirements and regulations, but some of us start digging into that, and you wonder where the heck this could be done. Certainly not on that site, maybe. And uh, you didn't present any of that, and not that you had to tonight, but it would give us a clue as to why we should make this change, besides all the other information we got. Okay. I'll raise the question again. Um, do we want to keep the hearing open, or, or does somebody want to make a motion to close the public hearing? I would move to close. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Not? Yeah. No, second. Okay. Uh, all in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Okay. Um, so it's seven in favor, one abstention. Do we want to have a discussion or does somebody want to make a motion so that we have something on the floor to discuss? Does it matter which? way we go well I, th I think customarily we've started with an affirmative motion, motion and then right. it either passes or fails what well, I, I will volunteer to make an affirmative motion for purposes of allowing a discussion okay is there a second I'll second okay may I uh, now we'll have the discussion all right <laughs> thank you first of all I wanted to say there were a lot of very thoughtful comments from a lot of people and um, also, I guess, to put this into perspective, for me, you know, this, we're talking, first of all, I think it was helpful what Billy Logan said to focus us that the village business district is a, just a portion of Old Weathersfield. But I think it's recognized that Old Weathersfield is a resource of the entire town. And, you know, the whole scheme of zoning regulations, as you all know, um, divides the town into multiple districts based on their characteristics and their features and develops a plan appropriate for each of those areas. And the thre threshold issue for me looking at th this is of those 47 properties, can I see any property in that district that's sitting here today, I believe, might be appropriate for this type of use. And my answer is I do not. And uh, I think we gave much thought when we developed the, and I think that's got to be our threshold issue, by the way. I don't think the answer is, oh, let's approve it and worry about it later when we see one or two or three or four applications. That's not the way to use our authority to change the zone. I think we really have to, and, and this is such a small area with only 47 properties, makes it a lot easier to do that, I think, in this case. Much thought was given to the village business regulations when we enacted the zoning regulations. I and others here were part of the commission at that time. And we specifically excluded multifamily not associated with mixed use. And I think the apartments above Village Pizza, apart from the fact that they're full living units, they are over a bank of first floor active retail, which is vital for that section of town. They are not residential in isolation, and they're certainly not what I'll call institutional residential boarding, whatever and you want to call it. Mixed use like that, retail first floor, yes. residential second floor is the way most communities are trying to go. 
You're exactly, so. exactly, George. That, that that's right. So I, I haven't heard anything that to me would justify the extraordinary action of a zone change. I I, I haven't seen any demonstrated need for this use. But if there were, virtually every other district in the entire town of Weathersfield is eligible for this use by special permit. And I don't think there's been any showing whatsoever that it's got to be here. Um, and I think it's our role to balance the interests of the town as a whole. And as I look at it, the proposed change is not only inconsistent with our current regs, which I think were well reasoned and thought out, I think it's inconsistent with the plan of conservation and development, the old Weathersfield master plan, and the study of, um, of uh, old Weathersfield. I can't think of the title of the last one you had attached to your vitalization. Um, so to allow 100% multifamily freestanding building of this nature, I don't think is justified and in terms of impacts I think we've heard talk about parking impacts and, and along those lines these other mixed uses that we have going on they draw upon each other so when somebody drives to Village Pizza or to Lucky Lou's and then they walk over to have an ice cream or to the store to buy a couple items to take home it's one car with people in it parking and, and frequenting many of those businesses. So it's whatever you want to call it, shared shared trips. Here it would be really a, a freestanding island of its own parking activity that's really not sharing and I think would be creating additional burden. I think there's issues of property values to the people who live nearby, potential noise issues, lighting issues, um, and I think you know, not only will it not enhance the character of the area, which is one of our standards, I think it will do harm. And in terms of relying on the state regulations that they're citing rather than adopting local standards, what is to prevent those state standards from changing tomorrow and suddenly what's 10 rooms becomes 20 or 30? We don't know where that goes. We relinquish control under the proposal that is before us. And um, so at the end of the day, I guess where I began with this is, can I see this use properly anywhere in the village business district as appropriate? My answer is no. And I think we should stand by our regulations as they are. I think they were well thought out and I think they're appropriate and I would suggest that we deny the application. Okay. Yes. Dan. I echo uh, Commissioner Hammer's comments. Uh, one thing I'd like to add, what really bothers me is a question I, I raised to council earlier on, why in the preliminary app, uh, informal application, pre-application, did, did the applicant come in and, and limit the project to 55 and older under our present regulations? And now it's coming in today with something different, uh, which would indicate to me that there's a change and I received no answer as to the reason for that change, which tells me that there's always a reason for change and maybe uh, this may not be for seniors. It may be for drug addicts. It may be for um, the problem with, we saw in Rocky Hill uh, with the, the Department of Corrections. Um, this is limitless. The application of what we're being asked to uh, adopt tonight, and and that's just a, another reason on top of uh, Commissioner Hamner's reasons that I'm opposed to the application. Anyone else? John? Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to state this accurately. Uh, I come from a you know a rather different direction. My analysis of having served in, in the development of housing for people with disabilities, having served uh, in the area of, of civil rights for people with disabilities, uh, you know, in at least four states in the union. Um, and I, 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 I don't have great sympathy for, uh, 
those folks that, that come at the issue of, you know, not in my backyard kind of thing, and some of the interpretive uh, statements made tonight uh, by some of the opponents to this um, in the way of, of, uh, of quoting our regulations and how they would be applied, I think stirs up issues of uh, you know, uh, you know, certain civil rights and equal protections of the law issues because this is not, uh, our regulations are not intended to foster a, 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 uh, a, a privileged, privileged class of people who happen to live in one location within, this, within the uh, town, uh, nor to discriminate against the particular groups that <coughs> other people may have you know, concerns about. On the other hand, some of the issues that have been raised, I think, are, are quite legitimate. I think they, they go into the areas of what in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in disabilities planning relates to you know, what's called deviancy just exposition. That is, the more and more uh, you know, entities, persons, if you will, that have uh, that in some way are, are considered to be exceptional. The greater the number, the, the less desirable that becomes within the perception of society. And it, and it can multiply uh, to create an atmosphere of, of total non-acceptance of certain classifications of, of people with other uh, folks that they happen to live with. And so the more numbers of people, in a, in a sense, that may be regarded as exceptional in some way, that congest an area, uh, can have a, a, a detrimental social impact. Um, and I think one of the concerns I have in, when I looked at the number of, of facilities within the state that fall under the regulatory classification that's proposed here and the number of people, you have uh, essentially 27 people per, you know, per site, which I think is in Old Weathersfield or in the village district would be a tremendous number, tremendous concentration of, of similar type of people that would then create uh, I think aversive consequences for the for these people. Um, I would also I also feel that the regulation as drafted raises concerns about uh, you know, I think as Commissioner Hamner pointed out, we lose I think jurisdiction over some of critical zoning issues such as you know. Uh, you know, habitability conditions, number, you know, square footage per, uh, per, you know, per person that would be available. Uh, the way I see it, you know, you, you could have, if the, for the state regulations, you can have basically 100 square feet, 125 square feet per person allocated in one of uh, these kinds of settings and still, you know, be licensable by the state. And that, I think, um, uh, I think runs against the the whole spirit and purpose of our uh, of the town zoning regulations in general, and in particular for the regulations as a, as they are applied for the particular district in question. And I think for th you know, those reasons, coupled with the fact that I haven't really heard. A, an identifiable uh, presentation of need with you know, data, statistics that you can use to make a fact-based decision um, presented by the applicant, I think uh, you know, reduces any level of support that I could have for the proposition in question. Thank you. Anyone else? So I'll, I'll just I'll just um, offer my you know my opinion. Um, 
I learned a lot. I learned a lot this evening. Um, and thank you for so many of the residents that turned out. They all, so many of you had such a hardship to get here and, and yet you spoke and you listened and were civil and I, I, um, I appreciate that. So the first thing I wanna say is that it bothers me a, a bit that, that this discussion by the applicant was bypassed uh, with the Historic Commission and it should have been more transparent. So that already bothers me. The, the second point is that there was a plan of conservation that was developed, that was developed over a course of long period of time with a lot of people involved. The public, inv I'll call it a public involvement phase. And it seems like everything was already developed. And here's the exciting thing, is that that portion of Old Weathersfield is thriving. So those plans and those decisions and all that energy that was, you know, is, is really being put to good use. And I have this thing about balance, and balance was discussed this evening, <coughs> that we already, have, we already have our planning and zoning regs. So if we insert this other piece, it's, it's like it's only inserting a piece, but it has a trickle down effect. And that trickle down effect is now we have to make sure that we're battling sometimes. So we have to be thinking and preventing. So if something works, why, why re reinvent the wheel? This thing works. And the point about the state regulations, when I hear state regulations, I think of mandates. There's always these mandates we have to do. And, and this area really, I don't wanna have sub be subjected to mandates or state regulations. It puts that portion at risk. So it's my opinion, uh, I feel like I don't, I would not be in favor of changing the um, regulations in the village business at this time. That's my, that's my opinion. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, as I said earlier, my concern is, according to what I've read, any residential home in that district with, can hold two, two to three people, can apply for this. And that, I think, in some ways throws off the whole, um, I guess the code or anything that's been written for Old Weathersfield. And I'm gonna read something that I found today online from the 2015 um, Connecticut State Code, or I guess it's called the Residential Care Assistant Living um, Policy 2015. It says residential homes also call, can be licensed by the Department of Health and, and other type of communities based on Carol adults. Renovated private homes can be used as small, and they put the initials RCH, you know, res the residential care. These homes used to be called boarding homes, homes for the aged, and rest homes. That's why I started looking through these regulations for that loophole. And that's the only reason why, as I said, we're looking at a large district. If it's more site specific, I might be um, more opt, opt to say yes. It's just the fact that we're in a large area with a lot of residential homes that I think we're opening a can of worms for that, you know, if we approve it. I guess, ironically or whatever, I, I reached the same conclusion as Dave does for the completely opposite reason. Um, you know, in that I think this is a very small district when you look at the town as a whole and I can't imagine that it would be cost effective for more than one or two of the properties in the district to go through all of what's required to, to accomplish this. Um, but, uh, and I guess just to respond to you know, a couple of the other things, it, it doesn't really trouble me that this is you know, inconsistent with what may have done been done with the historic district or, or at a pre-application conference here because, you know, again, we're kind of looking at the big picture of the whole village business district here. And, you know, essentially I, I would agree with um, Joe's analysis that, you know, this is, this is an institutional multifamily residential kind of use that we had 
made a legislative decision not to allow when we created the village business district 15, 18 years ago, um, the, the materials describing um, encouragement of housing diversity um, but not identifying the village business district as, you know, as a location for that, you know, strikes me as reasonable because, you know, that's inconsistent with the purposes that we had ascribed to the village business district in the, the plan of conservation and development. Um, you know, and then on top of that, the, uh, the old Weathersfield master plan and the, uh, you know, the specific study that was done for uh, redevelopment options for, for a particular number of parcels. Um, it just strikes me that the, you know, an intense institutional multifamily residential um, um, use is, is not consistent with what we are trying to de create down there and is not conducive to the kinds of uh, economic and residential development that you know, that we've tried to create down there. So that's, that's kind of my thoughts. Anyone else? If not, I guess we can vote. The motion on the floor is to approve the application. So I would ask for all in favor of approving the text change, please say aye. Okay. All opposed to the text change, please say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Uh, motion fails. The application is denied. Do we want to take a five minute break? Or? Yeah. Walking with my two kids and my wife, maybe? Yeah, my son is visiting because he's not living at home anymore. So, yes, I think I did see you right. I 
I used to live, I used to live just down the block from the corner of Rosedale for about seven years. An hour over, just still an old village. Really cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
trying to get over. Right. Tony. Yeah, really. The phrase at the end of the day is taking on a real meaning. Um, next item, copy of the zoning and property maintenance violation report from our new our new colleague, Charles Morrison. Um, so Mr. Charles Morrison is our new zoning and property uh, enforcement officer. Uh, he did provide you a copy of his most recent uh, report. Charles, maybe if you could come to the podium and introduce yourself and let the commission members know about your past experience and how long you've been here in town and all the uh, great fun you've been having in your new position. <laughs> Welcome. Good, good well, evening. Welcome, first of all. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good evening to you all. I thought your report was good, too. Thank you. I have been with the town two months now, and it's been a good experience. Uh, it's learning experience, too, uh, going through the regulations, uh, getting to understand, you know, the different, the new regulations, because, of course, I'm, I've done uh, 10 years uh, almost 11 years with another with a city in the city of Waterbury. So here now, um, it's a, the state statutes, of course, which governs most uh, zoning and, and planning uh, things remain the same. But the zoning regulations, it's a little different here and there. Um, they are pretty much the same uh, zoning violations. But here in this, in this town now, I have taken on the added responsibility of uh, property maintenance. And that has really taken on the, taken the bulk of my time. Right. Everybody here. mowing their grass now? Grass is ra <laughs> ra it's raining every other day. The grass is growing and things like that. But the thing is that um, I'm pleased to say that uh, the residents have been very cooperative for the most part. There's a lot of compliance with the, you know, the grass and the uh, property maintenance, the zoning violations. I think I've had a good uh, number of um, compliance with that. Yeah, you did in your report. Uh, showed and um, there's a lot of complaints. I mean, this is the season for uh, yeah. the, you know, all the activities and the building permits, the generators, the electrical permits, and things like that. So um, I've been very busy, and I intend to be busy for us. How many so of those uh, in your report were your own observation? I think more than 50%. It would be safe to say approximately 75% was my own observation. Okay. And consistency is important, right? Absolutely. So you don't want to just treat one part of town or one Right. Person right. in the street differently from another, they'll they'll go after you on that. <laughs> yes. Well, welcome aboard, and uh, you know we look forward to hearing from you. You know, after the grass season, um, you know, and and uh, you know when whenever you have issues, I mean, you can work with Peter, but you know, thank you very Feel much. free to um, you know come. If there's a particular issue that you're finding with the regulations, um, you know, we've been kind of keeping a list of, of things that could be fixed or could be adjusted that you find make yes. it difficult for you to either interpret or to enforce. Um, you know, if there's something that we can fix in the regulations to, to make your job easier and to make things more rational. Um, sure. Please feel free to, to let us know about it so that, you know, we can all try to create a better system. Be, yes, and Peter has been a good source of um, in, in information and inspiration for me. Uh, the building department staff, with which I work mostly, they are very, have been very helpful. Good. How many chickens do you have to have to be a problem? 
Little Town Avenue, got a couple. It's not so much the number of chickens, but the, num the amount of land that you have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hopefully, you won't have to be here till ten thirty at night. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> okay then. All right. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Charles. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Good luck. Uh, next item is perfect vision and sound. Um, a letter dated June twelfth regarding. Uh, Lucky Lou's measurement and management of sound levels. So as you will recall, um, the uh, attorneys uh, representing both Lucky Lou's and the neighbors uh, appeared in front of you two meetings ago or maybe at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, since that time we did meet uh, on site at Lucky Lou's um, with a uh, consultant um, representing perfect vision and sound. Uh, after that meeting, he came back to Lucky Lou's uh, during an actual uh, performance and took uh, measurements, which are explained in detail within this report. Uh, he did, uh, at the end, uh, uh, the attached Schedule A recommend some options uh, for consideration. Uh, I am waiting for a response from the uh, proprietor of Lucky Lou's and his representative as to how they um, intend uh, to respond to these findings uh, and we'll keep you uh, posted. Uh, Attorney Donahue uh, has indicated to me that he is going to continue uh, to attempt to resolve this issue um, so that compliance with the noise ordinance uh, is achieved um, through whatever um, methods might uh, be available to him. So. This issue uh, is not over, and as you can see from the report, uh, the decibel level readings are still um, questionable in terms of compliance. Um, so I will uh, keep you posted. Uh, obviously, I'm open to any guidance uh, from you as, uh, as this goes forward from this point in time. So the, uh, the consultant concluded that it was, in fact, the band that was making noise and not Route 91? That is correct. Okay. That was interesting. Yeah. Well, you, do you think it can be resolved, though? <coughs> I think there are some ideas here that uh, um, they believe will um, resolve it. Uh, some of these, I think, were actually suggested during the public hearings in terms of uh, you know putting up some background tarps and materials to try and uh, absorb uh, some of the sound. Um, and that's something that hadn't been tried, right? Has not been tried. Um, it sounds good to me when I read it, yeah. I don't know how costly uh, those methods would be, but uh, it would appear to me that they might be worth uh, pursuing. So, as I said, I think uh, uh, some of these are, are certainly not unreasonable, um, given the, the concerns of the neighbors and the readings that were provided in this report. Who pays for it? I would assume the payment, uh, the costs uh, would be on uh, the proprietor of Lucky Lou's um, since they'll be his materials that he would have to install, manage, and, you know, put in place. So okay. I, don't think, I don't think the neighbor is willing, I don't think the neighbor is willing to uh, participate if that's what you were suggesting. That, that would be nice. Or, and, uh, and keep the town away from participating. Well, I think the activity is, is, you know, the noise is being caused by a certain activity that isn't town initiated, so. Yeah. I'm really glad that uh, they did finally get an acoustical, acoustical engineering expert to uh, look into this and to make the recommendations, because uh, I, I felt for a long time this has been a chronic problem, and the only real way of having it is to have you know, a, an expert in the field you know, come up with some solutions. I will say too that his, you know, his, you know, his proposals seem, you know, very reasonable, uh, uh, and also economical on the basis of uh, my own experience in terms of uh, acoustical attenuation. I remember when we had you know, somewhat similar problems with uh, complaints from neighbors on our proposed installation of. Uh, uh, of the rooftop AC units at Soundbridge uh, close to 30 years ago that uh, uh, you know, 
to deal with those effectively and to really attenuate the sound, uh, it, it costs uh, my agency, ultimately the state, uh, over $50,000 for those attenuation efforts. Uh, we succeeded, uh, but it was at high cost. These seem to be you know, very, very economical. So I think, you know, if anything, I'd convey to uh, Lucky Loose, he's getting off cheap. Peter, if you need to do site visits to look at comparable type outside venues, so I'd, I'd volunteer my time. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll take that burden off of you. Yeah, okay. Schedule a special meeting. Right. Right. I pr we appreciate the offer, though. Well, we're going to adjourn the meeting to Friday nights. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, minutes of June 5th. Make a motion to approve, Mr. Chair. Okay. I second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Abstain. Okay. That wasn't here either. Joe and Tony are abstaining. Um, any public comments of general matters of planning and zoning. You guys are gonna get tired of me. Uh, Lorraine Powers, 126 Main Street. Uh, I'm having an issue, and I think a lot of people are, with the parking situation at Lucky Lou's. Generally, Thursday through uh, Saturday, but there was some today. People are parking on the grass on the side of the building where the Christmas tree is which doesn't sound like a big deal, but to get there, they're driving up the sidewalk. And one week, th that was completely filled with cars, and then the greenway between the sidewalk and the street was completely filled with cars. We were walking our dog, and we had a car driving behind us on the sidewalk. Something really has to be get done. I think it's a safety issue. If somebody's injured, I think the town of Weathersfield could really be, be held liable because it's a known problem, and nobody's really addressing the issue. I actually called the police one night, and did, nobody did even respond? went. No, they did not. I called the town manager, and I never heard back. Um, so I don't know where else to go. I'm hoping maybe you guys could help out with the problem, because it, it's really a, a concerning issue. <laughs> he can put it on his <laughs> list for next month. <laughs> Thanks for your time. You're looking at him. <laughs> Thank you very much. That, that's a serious matter. We're not supposed to be parking on the lawns and front lawns of our homes in town. No, no. And the police are supposed to be enforcing that. Yeah. No, so we can invite Charles to all of our special site visits there. I actually think one thing that might help is if Lucky Blues put up a sign that said no parking and to yeah. show the key exactly. Anybody who parks on the grass is, knows what they should be. So th th that's a factor no parking of parking signs. in that area of town. Well, it's yeah, it's gotten uh, in the ch this year. It's yeah. busiest year since I've been around. So, well, I think having I some some kind of clear path between the back of Lucky Lou's and the Keeney Center, since that's all either historic mm -hmm. society or town property. Yes, you know, so that it, people can. Feel comfortable. Stumble their right. way through the right. backyards to, to get to the, the parking spaces probably would be helpful to encourage people to actually park back there because it's you know it's half as far as if you had to go out and around. Right. Right. These people are inherently lazy. Yes, they are. And they will continue to park on the grass until they find that particular park. That's going to I think that would have to happen. Just a couple of other things to make you aware of. Um, up on the Berlin Turnpike, the, the gas station that's under construction, if you recall, there was a substantial retaining wall of mm -hmm. 25 feet in height uh, that was required um, between that property and the proposed self-storage on the upside. The self-storage project has apparently fizzled, so they have asked the town engineer to look at a revised uh, plan for the retaining walls. There'll still be retaining walls, but given the design of the self-storage facility, they would certainly not be um, anywhere near um, uh, unless that project came back online and they'd have to go back out and, and rebuild. Um, so uh, they have submitted a, a modification to the town engineer that he's looking at 
Um, so I just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, and then uh, secondly, at your last meeting, you approved the office use for the Blades building. Apparently that project has already um, hit a roadblock and may not be going forward, so. Was that what the what, digging the, on the side of the building was, or is that unrelated? I, I think it was related. They were doing their due diligence and testing, and um, um, so negotiations have uh, fallen off the table. We were we received an email earlier this week about that, so I just want you to be aware. At your last meeting, you the, the office, yeah. So the, the they're not going forward with that project. I I'd, I'd rather not get into the details. Just, Suffice to say, uh, it's not likely that tenant will be using that building, so someone else may be coming in for that at some point. Okay. Did we cancel our first meeting in July? Not yet. I was going to suggest that um, we don't have any pending applications. Nothing got carried over uh, from tonight. The next meeting would have been July 3rd, which we already kind of circled on the calendar. is not a good night probably for the majority of you. So. I would certainly uh, entertain a motion to you know, cancel motion that meeting. Made. Second. Yeah, I mean, as much as I enjoy all of your company, um, <laughs> okay. uh, all in favor of canceling the July 3rd meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Yeah, I think we kind of play it by ear. Do the early one, canceling yeah. the second one. All right, is there anything else? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Adjourn. Second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.